Thank you very much, Julian. I, uh, Governor, uh, and uh, I want to thank you as well for uh, for all you do. You know, and the IBW is the one, one of the outfits that, as they say in Claymont, Delaware, from that brung me to the dance. And uh, they're the best in the world, and uh, and really great seeing uh, uh, you all working together. Dr. Keller and the Enroll team, thanks for welcoming me here. And uh, Governor, it's good to see you again and your whole team. Lieutenant Governor Primavera, Attorney General, Secretary of State. You know, you got the Mayor, Mayor Hancock. I think he's here. He was here. I thought I saw him earlier today. I want to thank you for the welcome to Denver for, and for making uh, the trip out here. And to uh, my friends in Congress, Chairman Baker, thank you for being here. My team, we have the Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm, who I always say, were she born in America and not Canada, she'd be standing here as president. But uh, she's doing a heck of a job for me and for the country. And uh, a proud electric car driver as well. And also the former secretary and former mayor of Denver, Federico Pena, a good friend of mine who's here. There you go, friend. Good to see you, pal. Well, I couldn't be here, uh, I wanted to mention that uh, the senator and our my nominee for ambassador to Mexico is Ken Salazar. And I'm glad to see Congressman Pulmotor and, and, uh, and Nagis and Crow. I want to thank you all. You have uh, other places to be, I know. And three good friends who, uh, who wanted to be here in Washington today right now. Um, and uh, so, uh, you know, there's a lot. Senator Bennett and, Hick and Hickenlooper and uh, Congressman DeGette, they're all in Washington doing what they have to do. When you, look, uh, you, when you look at who you've heard from, it's clear. Whether you're an engineer or on a la at a lab bench, the IB or an IBW worker working on a combine, a, tribune, a, 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 a turbine. When, uh, when you work for a power company or a small construction business, everyone, everyone has a role to play. And everyone is building a clean energy future and a stronger economy, because that's what it's about. And, and we need everyone's contributions. We need everyone's contributions. Yesterday, I saw firsthand the devastation of the Caldor fire in California as we flew over in a helicopter. And the last two weeks, I traveled to Louisiana, New York, and New Jersey, see the destruction from Hurricane Ida. More people killed in New York with flooding, 20 inches of rain, and what's happened up there, than were killed when 178 mile an hour winds hit Louisiana. Extreme weather, as we're seeing, is only going to come more frequently and with more ferocity. And we're blinking code red as a nation, and we really are. So far this year, nationwide, there are 44,000 wildfires that have burned nearly 5.6 million acres. That's enough. That's the size of the entire state of New Jersey burned flat. They've caused billions of dollars in damage and forced tens of thousands of people to evacuate their homes and businesses. And even if it's not in your backyard, you feel the effects, as you mentioned earlier. You turn on the local weather, in addition to deciding what the temperature is and what the precipitation will be, you want to know what the smoke forecast is going to be. When parents fear letting their kids out to play, but outside it may trigger an asthma attack. You saw the vicious cycle this summer when heavy rains combined, combined with the burn scar of 2020 Grizzly Creek fire. It resulted in mudslides, as was pointed out, that washed out an entire section of Interstate 70, adding hours of people's drives and cutting off a vital commercial artery. <clears throat> the bottom line is it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Communities that nearly one in three Americans call home have been struck by weather disasters in just the past few months. Hurricanes in the Gulf Coast are up to the and up this eastern seaboard. Wildfires threatening throughout the west and tearing it apart. Droughts and heat waves across the country, devastating farmers and ranchers and draining the Colorado River. In addition to the lost lives, lives shattered, extreme weather cost America last year $99 billion. <clears throat> $99 billion extreme weather cost last year. And it's going to break the record this year. It's going to be well over $100 billion. We know what the driver is, climate change. We know what's causing climate change, human activity. 
This is no longer subject to debate. And I might add, windmills do not cause cancer. You know, look, we got to get real about what's going on. I, I really mean it. Think about it. The only debate is around what we do to confront this crisis. And that shouldn't even be a debate. You know, we have to invest in being more resilient uh, because of the impacts of climate. The climate change is occurring today, not next year, not 10 years from now. And <clears throat> we have to make the investments that are going to slow our contributions to climate change today, not tomorrow. And here's the good news. <clears throat> Something that is caused by humans can be solved by humans. I've set a course for the United States to achieve 50 to 52 percent reduction in greenhouse emissions by 2030. And for us to reach that net zero emissions in the economy, well, economy-wide, across the board, by 2050. As part of that, I set a goal of having our country reduce 100 100 percent carbon pollution-free power by 2035. We can do that. We can do all of this in a way that creates good jobs, lowers cost to consumers and businesses, and makes us global leaders in an entirely new industry that other countries are really working hard to try to dominate. I just toured the Renewable Energy Lab, which I haven't been here not the same lab, but I haven't been here since 2011. <clears throat> it was just started under President Carter and expanded under President Bush, H.W. Bush. Leaders of both parties have recognized that clean energy future is an economic imperative, and a national security imperative, and an environmental imperative. That's why my Build Back Better plan calls for significant new investments in upgrading research infrastructures, laboratories all across the country. We'll be, uh, we'll be making uh, one of those breakthroughs in solar, wind, and storage uh, on, out of these facilities. Out-innovate the rest of the world and drive down the cost of renewable energy. Of course, we have to invest in the future. We need to deploy cutting-edge technologies. And we have to employ them today, not tomorrow. I had a chance to see the state of the art wind turbine testing and new battery technologies. Because of the years of work that have taken place here and these technologies aren't science fiction. They're ready to be installed and scaled up across the country right now by union members like the ones we heard from today. And that's what we're going to do. You know, as we just heard from the CEO of Xcel Energy, they've set a goal of producing 100 percent carbon emission-free power. They were the first major utility, the first major utility to set that goal. And today, over 20 large facilities around the nation have set a similar goal. You led the way. Today, one of every three Americans lives in a city or a state transi transitioning to clean energy, clean energy electricity. But folks, we have to pick up the pace. When I rejoined the Paris Climate Accord after we had been pulled out of it, the goal set when our administra last administration, the Obama-Biden administration, when that was set, they were set that we had more time. We don't have the time now. The goals are different because the necessity is there. We don't have a lot of time. We don't have much more than 10 years, for real. And this is a decisive decade. Already the place of solar generation in this country has dropped 80 percent over the past decade, 80 percent. The price of a wind turbine generation has dropped 55 percent. A lot is because of the investments we made in the Recovery Act back when I was vice president. And today, renewables are now cheaper than fossil fuels in many parts of the country. Now we need to take the next step of continuing to drive prices down and job creation up. Because those renewable goals create demand for more wind turbines and more installations, solar installations, which means Good jobs for workers like Julian and his union brothers and sisters. You know, you can see why I think the climate change, when I think of it, I think jobs. I had a meeting with over 140 heads of state on the Zoom that we hosted in, out of the White House. And one of the things, by the time I finished, everyone was talking about jobs. It's not about costing jobs. Initially, as you remember, even you guys, I spent a lot of time before I announced my plan meeting with all the unions 
to convince you all that this is the future. These are where the jobs are. When I say jobs, I'm not talking about $15 an hour. I'm not talking. Am I not speaking loudly enough? I can see you having trouble hearing me back there. It, it, you know, I'm talking about uh, union jobs, not 15, 20 bucks an hour, 45, 50 bucks an hour benefits. That's going to grow the country too. I've never seen the wealthy do poorly when the middle class does well. That's never happened. So to accelerate that process, we need to invest and innovate. We need a modern electric grid, one that is much higher capacity, more resilient transmission wires, and, you know, and with, has more storage capacity, using advanced batteries so we can hold on to surplus energy generated when the sun's not shining and the wind's not blowing. Right now, it's going to rain. No. <laughs> right now, we've got transmission projects that could carry enough power for millions of homes, but they need catalytic investment to move to the construction phase. Our bipartisan infrastructure bill contains the largest federal investment in power transmission in our history so that our grid is more reliable, we can carry more renewable energy, so we can create good union jobs building that new grid. We're also making dramatic investments in public transit, electric buses, charging stations. In Denver, we're going to help Mayor Hancock achieve his goal of reducing greenhouse gases in the city by 80 percent. It's going to create jobs that we know the local 68 Apprentice Center is busy training workers to be able to perform. And by the way, I'm bringing the automakers, including the big three, and the UAW along so we have more electric vehicles on the road and fewer tailpipe emissions in the air. We're going to cap thousands, we're going to cap thousands of abandoned oil wells and gas wells, leaking methane, threatening public health and communities, and get paid the same price for capping them as was to dig them. We're going to provide support to make our communities, including tribal nations, much more resilient to the impacts of climate change. Every dollar we invest to flood-proof or a power station, install power lines underground, winterize a power plant, or to build advanced turbines like the ones here, every dollar we spend saves six dollars down the road because the next time a disaster strikes, flooding is contained. The fire doesn't spread as widely. The power stays on. And these investments can also save lives, save homes and create good paying jobs for Americans to make our country stronger and more resilient. In fact, experts tell us that the bipartisan agreement we've reached in the American Infrastructure Bill will put 800,000 people to work, 800,000, including plumbers, pipe fitters, electrical workers, steel workers, modernizing roads, bridges, water systems, broadband systems, making high-speed Internet available to 85,000 Coloradans who currently don't have it. And that's what's in the Infrastructure Bill. That's already agreed to. And we're negotiating right now for my plan to build back better, which includes additional action to address climate crisis. It includes tax credits that will effectively cut the cost of building utility-scale solar farms by 30 percent, shorten the time it takes for residential-scale residential scale solar systems to pay for themselves in around eight years and instead of eight in less than five years. Save consumers 1250 bucks for an electric vehicle like a Ford F-150. By the way, 0 to 64.1, that's a different <laughs> Help us reach the goal of half new cars sold in America will be electric by 2030, saving billions of gallons of gasoline. And I want to see, I want to create a civilian climate corps. I've been pushing that for a long time. Similar to the, the conservation corps that President Roosevelt created during the Great Depression, put a new generation of Americans to work, helping us connect and conserve our public lands and become resilient in the process. Yesterday, I visited the National Interagency Fire Center in Idaho where we coordinate our federal fire response to wildfires. They told me that the climate, the Civilian Climate Corps would make an enormous difference by cleaning away combustible under, underbrush, enable fires that enable fires to spread by planting trees to fight climate change. In the end, it's not about red states or blue states. A drought or a fire doesn't see a property line. It doesn't care to give a damn for which party you belong. Disasters aren't going to stop. That's the nature of the climate threat. But we know, we know what we have to do. We just need to summon the courage and the creativity to do it. Yes, we face a crisis. But we face a crisis with an unprecedented opportunity. 
to create good jobs in the future, to create industries of the future, to win the future, to save the planet. Ladies and gentlemen, we can do this. This is the United States of America. There has never been a problem we've faced when we set our mind to deal with it. We haven't been able to, I, I mean it literally. Never have we failed to meet an objective we set. And what's happening now with both the industry, the government, unions, people around the country, is that we've set a goal. And the goal is achievable. And I promise you, I promise you, it's going to create great economic growth, reduce inflation, and put people in a place where those beautiful children in the back are never going to have to worry about what we're worrying about right now. So thank you. Remember, there's not a damn thing we're unable to do in America when we put our when we come together. Never ever have we failed, and we're not going to fail now because of all of you. Thank you for it. Thanks, everybody. I really mean it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate it.